I offer the call to the member for Denison. Good morning, Deputy Speaker. It's always a pleasure to see a fellow Tasmanian in charge. Um, but Deputy Speaker, uh, regrettably, it, it's looking increasingly, increasingly like uh, everyone in this place will vote in support of this bill, with the exception of the member for Melbourne, um, myself and perhaps one or two other crossbenchers. Um, in other words, virtually everyone in this House is taking a position that the end justifies the means. And that, in fact, has been made clear in a number of speeches that we've heard in this place uh, already uh, in regard to this bill. Uh, just about every person has jumped up and made the point that by retaining uh, metadata compulsorily for uh, two years will, in fact, help the law enforcement or the security agencies do their work. Now, I don't dispute that, Deputy Speaker. As someone who has served in the military for 20 years and a, a stint in intelligence, it, it's clear to me that if uh, the security services could have access to all of this metadata for a period of two years on everyone with a computer or a smartphone or a tablet or whatever, um, I have no doubt it will make their, their job a little bit easier. But the question is, where do you draw the line? Uh, and the point is, Deputy Speaker, that we should never let the end justify the means. The question is, you know, where do you draw the line? And uh, I formed the view in the last parliament, when I was on the Parliamentary Joint Committee on Intelligence and Security, which looked into this, um, this matter uh, previously, um, I quickly came to the conclusion, and in fact, uh, without giving too much away, I think it would be fair to say a number of my colleagues on that committee came to the conclusion that this would be um, uh, an unreasonable extension of the power of the state. Uh, and that's the challenge for us, Deputy Speaker, in this place, is to work out where to draw the line. I mean, if, 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 if you said to the security agencies you can do whatever you want about any matter, I reckon they'd solve a lot of matters. Um, if you summarily executed every suspected shoplifter, I'm sure we'd very, very quickly reduce the incidence of shoplifting. But of course, that's a, that's a ludicrous proposition. It would never be done, because we know where to draw the line. But when it comes to national security, we seem to be always tempted to just move that line a bit further. Just extend the power of the state just that little bit further. Um, and that puts us on a slippery slope. Because where does this end? I recall when this was first mooted a few years ago, mandatory metadata retention was only to be about national security and uh, defeating terrorism. Uh, and the government at the time was very careful to emphasise that. People in this House were very aware that that was what we were talking about. But already we've heard in people's uh, uh, speeches and comments they've made in this place and outside this place uh, comments about all sorts of other forms of crime. So already we're seeing that incrementalism at play where it's not just about terrorism. It's that we want to keep um, the electronic footprint of every person with some sort of uh, smart device, keep their electronic footprint for two years, perhaps so that we can um, um, so, you know, track them down and prosecute them for any number of offences short of terrorism. Deputy Speaker, what I think we should be doing in this place, rather than talking about the expansion of the metadata arrangements and making them mandatory, I think what we should be doing is questioning the metadata arrangements that are already in place and asking why there is already so much metadata stored uh, without any sort of legal cover and why the authorities are accessing it so many times without uh, necessarily having a warrant. In fact, when I look at the figures for the last couple of years, Deputy Speaker, I see that in fiscal 11-12, um, security services, both uh, federal and state, access metadata 290,358 times. In fiscal 12-13, Deputy Speaker, the security agencies at federal and state level access metadata 319,874 times, um, all without any sort of legislative uh, framework, none of it with recourse, mandatory recourse uh, to a warrant. I think that's the sort of thing, Deputy Speaker, we should be discussing in, in this place, that, that so much metadata is already sloshing around and it is already being accessed. Why, why Deputy Speaker, should we already be allowing metadata to be searched uh, without warrant when we accept that someone's property if for someone's property to be searched normally there should be a warrant well this is their property 
Uh, surely there should be warrants introduced uh, right now. Um, and you know, I, I don't accept the comment that was made by a previous speaker uh, that getting a warrant is just too hard. Well, that's the whole point. The whole point of getting a warrant is that there should be a, a tension in the process, that it should be a bit difficult, that it should be, the onus should be placed on the security official to make the case, make the case to a judge. And it should be a bit difficult because we want to have that tension. We want to make it a bit hard. We want warrants to be issued when the uh, case for a warrant can be unambiguously made and when a judge can be, uh, without any doubt in his or her mind, convinced that a warrant is necessary. Um, I've already made the point, uh, Deputy Speaker, that, I, I, that I'm intrigued by the incrementalism that's already crept in. The fact that this was originally all about terrorism, but now we're talking as much about uh, uh, pedophiles and other uh, heinous and serious crimes. Now I'm the first to say, you know, we must we must track those uh, people down and we must prosecute them. But where do you draw the line? And I fear that we're already on a slippery slope, and we don't know where this where this slope is going to take us. Before we know it, there will be this massive metadata uh, uh, or volume of metadata being stored, and before we know it. People will be making application to access it for um, perhaps in civil matters. And what will the government of the day make of that? I fear that eventually this will just be a resource for anyone uh, to access. And that would, be, that would be so far removed from the original purpose, both in this country and in other countries where they have looked at metadata or mandatory metadata retention. Uh, Deputy Speaker, I have made the point that, this will, that mandatory metadata retention will assist the security agencies, but I do worry that in this place uh, some uh, members have been too quick to take at face value the assurances of the security agencies about just how much use metadata is. Because we know from history, we know without any doubt, Deputy Speaker, from history that the most clever terrorists know what they're doing. We saw this at 9-11, where uh, a very small group of people, using innovative means, carried out those uh, shocking attacks uh, um, in 2011. Um, and we know that these days, you know, fortunately most would-be terrorists uh, aren't real bright, and we're able to track them down and uh, detect them and take action against them. But there is a small number out there who are very clever, and they know how we operate. And they know with these, uh, with these new laws, if they come to pass, there will be ways to defeat that. It will not be hard for them to defeat it. It will not be hard for them to use foreign-based uh, telecommunications environments to beat our laws, because the relevant metadata for them will be stored in another country where we can't access. Um, we also know that a large amount of the World Wide Web is not accessible uh, normally and not accessible normally to the security agencies. And this is where the real evildoers hang out. Um, this is where, people, this is where uh, terrorists will sometimes communicate. This is where uh, pedophiles will sometimes uh, share their pictures. Uh, this is where uh, all sorts of unspeakable things go on. Places like the deep web, uh, that portion of the World Wide Web content that is not indexed by standard search engines, um, or the dark internet, which is made up of computers that can no longer be reached via the internet. That's where we will push the real evildoers, meaning that mandatory metadata retention will end up being much more a matter for law-abiding people like ourselves who are having our electronic footprint recorded uh, and lesser criminals who haven't got the smarts to go to places like the deep web or use uh, facilities like the deep internet or haven't got the nous to use a foreign-based uh, uh, communications environment. So I do worry that we will not achieve what we're trying to achieve to the full extent, even though we will all be paying an enormous price that our electronic footprint will be stored for two years. And, Deputy Speaker, let's not underestimate what that footprint means. Speakers are very quick to say, oh, don't you worry about that. It'll be just the fact that you made a call. Well, it'll be a darn sight more than that, Deputy Speaker. For example, every time your phone is recorded as having a location will be recorded for two years. So, in other words, 
the security services will know where every phone has been located that, while it's been turned on for the last two years. I mean, this is an unprecedented extension of the power of the state. I don't know that people in this House understand the scope of the extension of the power of the state that is being contemplated in here and likely to pass, uh, pass the parliament. Not even in the United States, Deputy Speaker, have they contemplated such a uh, remarkable extension of the power of the state. And most countries in Europe have balked at going anywhere near this because they know it is an unprecedented extension of the power of the state. And it is, and I don't mean to sound overly dramatic, but it is a step towards a police state. When all of a sudden our security agencies will have in their possession or access uh, to your electronic footprint for the last two years, and they'll know every time you've made a phone call, every time you've sent, a, sent an email, everywhere your phone has gone, which presumably is, is on your person. Quite remarkable. Deputy Speaker, when I was on the PJCIS in the 43rd Parliament and we did look into these matters, I was, I was quite affected by the, um, by the volume of public submissions and the breadth of public submissions. There were thousands of submissions from all sorts of individuals and organisations, and not your usual suspects. Uh, these, were, these, were, these were people, mostly these submissions were from people and organisations that should be listened to, and they were overwhelmingly opposed to mandatory data re uh, retention. So why are we ignoring them? It, I cannot fathom it. I can only assume that members of the government, members of the PJCIS in this parliament, they've gone in the in, inside the tent. And when secrets are shared with you, it's intoxicating. And you start to drink the Kool-Aid and you start to believe everything that's, that's been said. And when the security agencies are asking uh, for a check, you hand them a blank check because you've drunk the Kool-Aid and you're believing everything they've said. Well, of course they'll ask for everything. That's their job. It's our job to limit what they get, limit it to what is acceptable to the community, limit the power of the state to acceptable, to acceptable levels. Deputy Speaker, I might have had a different response to this bill if a couple of aspects were addressed, and they won't be addressed. And I've raised them before. Uh, one is that there needs to be much more effective parliamentary oversight of the intelligence services. Um, uh, I think it was the member for Greenway was expressing some, some confidence in this bill because uh, she was able to say that we in the parliament would keep a close eye on this and we would know what's going on and we would monitor it and perhaps be able to take remedial action. Well, I, I, I support the member of Greenway's sentiment, but the reality is the parliament has no oversight of operational matters of the security services. The Parliamentary Joint Committee on Intelligence and Security only has a remit of administrative oversight of some of the security services. Um, and it's, in fact, the ministers that have oversight of the relevant uh, agencies. Uh, and that's fine why you've got good ministers, but what happens in the next parliament or the one after that or the one after that when you've got a dud minister and someone who's prepared to go just that bit further? Again, we're back on the slippery slope. And I might have a different approach to this, that if we if we had taken this opportunity, Deputy Speaker, to ask why is it that already every year the security services access metadata without warrant hundreds of thousands of times? That is effectively searching someone's property. There should be a warrant arrangement in place now, and any sort of mandatory metadata uh, um, storage arrangement, access arrangement, surely that must include warrants for any access not just journalists, that access anyone's metadata. And yes, that will be hard. It will slow things up. But I tell you what, it will ensure that the security agencies less and less unnecessarily access our property and more and more focus on the property of people that should be scrutinised. That's what's required, a Deputy Speaker. So again, this is a missed opportunity, a missed opportunity to give the parliament greater oversight a missed opportunity to put in place a warrant requirement for all access to all metadata. Uh, instead, we're doing, we're doing what we do, um, or the parliament is doing what it does. Uh, I hope I'm wrong. I hope more than the member for Melbourne and myself and perhaps one or two other crossbenchers oppose this bill. I will certainly oppose this bill, and I'll continue to oppose it and speak out strongly against it, and I'll call on, at least on a future parliament, to wind it back. 
Thank you, Deputy Speaker.